Minasan, konnichiwa. Are you ready to improve your English fluency by learning idioms? Are you ready to learn some animal idioms? My name is Jen, and today we're going to learn 15 idioms all about dogs and cats. First, let's remember what an idiom is. An idiom is a collection of words that when you put them together, they create a new non-literal meaning. For example, it's raining cats and dogs! Does not actually mean that dogs and cats are falling from the sky. What raining cats and dogs actually means is that there's really heavy rain. There is a lot of rain. There are no dogs and cats falling from the sky, but we will use the idiom, the expression, it's raining cats and dogs, to describe the fact that there is a lot of rain. Now that we reviewed what an idiom is, let's take a look at 15 idioms using cats and dogs. The first idiom we're going to look at today is copycat. Don't be such a copycat. Oh my gosh, you're such a copycat. If you call somebody a copycat, it means that they are imitating or mimicking your actions or doing something the same way that you do it. So whatever action one does, the other person does, right? So when you call somebody a copycat, it's a negative thing because you're, you don't like people to imitate you. You want to be an original, right? So, oh my goodness, don't be such a copycat. Our second idiom is to work like a dog. It's been a hard day's night and I've been working like a dog, right? So the idiom to work like a dog means that you are very hard working. You keep pushing yourself to work more and work more and get your work done. You're exhausting yourself because you're working so hard. Number three, don't be such a scaredy cat. If you're a scaredy cat, it means that you are easily frightened by something. You get scared very easily. So often you can hear younger people taunting their friends. Oh my goodness, don't be such a scaredy cat. Just do it, okay? So if you are a scaredy cat, you are easily frightened by things. Idiom number four. <coughs> oh, I'm as sick as a dog. The idiom, as sick as a dog, means that you are extremely ill. You are really, really sick. You can't get out of bed because you feel so terrible. Number five. So if you are sick as a dog, maybe you should try and take a cat nap. So the next idiom is to take a cat nap. To take a cat nap means to have a short rest, a short sleep in the middle of the day. So sometimes people just say take a nap, but if you want to emphasize how short your nap is going to be, you might say, I'm just going to take a quick cat nap. Our next idiom is also connected to sleeping. It is the expression to let sleeping dogs lie. So to let sleeping dogs lie means that you should not stir up trouble. Do not make unnecessary difficulties by poking and prodding your way into things. Number seven, curiosity killed the cat. I have so many questions, asking questions, asking questions. <laughs> Okay. Curiosity killed the cat means that if you ask too many questions, you're going to cause problems. So if you don't want curiosity to kill the cat, let sleeping dogs lie. Obviously you're not going to die and it's not used as a threat when someone says curiosity killed the cat. It can be used in a very playful way. If someone keeps asking me some personal questions and I don't really want to answer them, I might just be like, mm, curiosity killed the cat, you know. Our next idiom is, it's a dog eat dog world. Hung, hung, hung. Dog eat dog world. What this idiom means is that people will do anything to get ahead in life. Right? So life is like a competition and you're always competing and trying to win and trying to beat the other person. So if you say it's a dog eat dog world, this idiom also implies that people are willing to cheat and lie and do anything possible so that they can be the winner. Okay? So be careful out there because it is a dog eat dog world. Ruff, ruff, meow. 
cats and dogs are known for fighting with each other. Right? So our next idiom is they are fighting like cats and dogs. So if you fight like cats and dogs, it means that you are really going at it. You're arguing with that person. You're fighting with that person again and again and again and really violently and really big. Usually fighting like cats and dogs also refers to a relationship of two people that are very close, usually siblings, right? So you can say um, the sister was fighting with her brother a lot, okay? They were fighting like cats and dogs, just going at it, yelling, screaming, biting each other, etc. You can imagine, right? So, if you have two children, be careful that they don't fight with each other like cats and dogs. Number 10. This part of your body, here, is called your tongue. Tongue. So here is Pluto's tongue. The next idiom is has the cat got your tongue, right? So now you can see this cat has Pluto's tongue. Has the cat got your tongue? This idiom means that you are very silent, very quiet, and you don't know what to say. So for example, uh, my husband is not very good in parties and is often a little shy and kind of quiet. So sometimes someone might turn to him and be like, yo, what's up, cat got your tongue? Meaning, hey, you aren't really speaking. Why aren't you able to speak? So, cat got your tongue is like an inquisitive question. Like, hey, what's up? Everything okay? Cat got your tongue? You're not really speaking. Number 11. Number 11 is you can't teach an old dog new tricks. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. This idiom is often used to express the idea that you can't teach elderly people or older people how to do new things. So, for example, my father will never be able to use a computer well because you can't teach an old dog new tricks. That's what the idiom says, but no matter what your age is, I want you to know that if you keep studying English and you try and you practice, you can be successful with English. So even though the idiom is, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, maybe you can. Cats are known for dragging terrible things into their houses for their owners to find, like a dead bird or a dead mouse or really disgusting things owners are able to find because their cat brings them in. Their cat drags these undesirable things into their house. So this is connected to our next idiom, which is, look what the cat dragged in. Look what the cat dragged in. This idiom means that you're looking at a person, you say it to them, look what the cat dragged in. You're implying in a playful way that the way they are dressed looks very messy or disheveled, not very well put together. Sometimes even maybe the fact that they are inappropriately dressed. Okay? So if you think, for example, maybe you are sitting at home with some of your friends and your younger sister walks in and she got caught in the rain because it was raining cats and dogs and she's completely soaked. All of her clothes are wet and sticking to her and her hair is a mess. You would say to her, ha ha, look what the cat dragged in. Number 13. This expression is gone to the dogs. So if you say something has gone to the dogs, it means that you think it is not as good as it used to be. The quality of that thing has deteriorated or decreased. It's gone to the dogs, right? So if I have a favorite restaurant and I really love that restaurant and I go there often, I think it's great. But gradually over time, I realize, oh, the quality of the food is decreasing and decreasing and the customer service isn't very good anymore, right? And different things about the restaurant that used to be amazing are no longer good. I would say, wow, this restaurant has gone to the dogs. This place has totally gone to the dogs. Our next idiom is to let the cat out of the bag. Let the cat out of the bag. So if you let the cat out of the bag, it means that you are revealing a secret that you should not have told anybody. Okay? Um, another idiom that has the same meaning is to spill the beans, to tell somebody something that you are not supposed to mention, right? So maybe, for example, there is a surprise party for my friend. It's a surprise, so obviously I'm not supposed to tell her about the party. But maybe we are having coffee and I say to her, oh yeah, I'll see you on Saturday night for your party. 
What party? Uh, oh no, I let the cat out of the bag because I accidentally told her about the surprise party. Let the cat out of the bag. Number 15, our last idiom for the day is to get a doggy bag. Get a doggy bag. What this means is that when you are eating food in a restaurant, maybe you are unable to finish everything that is on your plate because you feel too full. So, what many people will do is they will ask the waiter, could I get this to go please? Sorry, could I wrap up the rest of this to take home? Or, could I please get a doggy bag? So after your meal, next time you are in an English speaking country eating in a restaurant and you can't finish eating everything, try asking, could I have a doggy bag please? So today, you learned 15 idioms using cats and dogs. And now it's time for question of the day. Today's question is, which do you prefer, cats or dogs and why? Let me know in the comments below. Mina, thank you, gambate ne, jane. Here's a little bit of an extra bonus for you. I want to teach you a final idiom about cats, but it isn't used very often anymore. However, you might hear it in movies that are set around the 1920s, 1930s. This idiom is the cat's pajamas. If you say something is the cat's pajamas, you think it's really amazing, fascinating, and interesting. So, if you think that this lesson is the cat's pajamas, please don't forget to hit subscribe and hit like, and I'll see you in the next lesson.